Alright, so today I'm going to start uh, working on the engine and transmission a little bit. Really, I'm not going to replace anything. All I want to do is inspect it and I want to take the transmission off the bell housing, take the bell housing off the engine, uh, inspect the clutch and the pressure plate, and then get the engine put up on the engine stand to get it up off the floor, trying to take up a little bit less space. So once I get it all up, uh, get the transmission off, the bell housing off, I'm going to look at the clutch, look at the clutch disc, and the pressure plate, I want to see if those need to be replaced, and what the condition are, and I'm going to kind of walk you through what I see on mine and what you can look for on yours if you're running a uh, manual transmission in your car. Everything I go through is really going to be similar for a manual transmission. It's going to run a clutch and a pressure plate, even if it's a twin disc, a triple disc, anything like that. Pretty common basic stuff between all of them. And once I get it apart, let's just step through it piece by piece before I get on to the next piece. So let's get this taken off, get the bell housing taken off, set aside, and I've got plastic underneath. I've already had the oil out of it, but it's going to be oily, messy. You can see how greasy it is from uh, 30 years of use. So let's get started. Okay, now that I've got the transmission taken off of the bell housing, just for reference, the bolt heads require a 15 millimeter socket or wrench. I broke them loose obviously with a breaker bar and then just used a uh, ratcheting wrench. 15 millimeter, four bolts, based on the four corners. Easier to definitely take off the bottoms first or in a crisscross and leave the last one as one of the tops. 
That way it doesn't fall out and then I put my jack underneath. Just to provide a little bit of support as I took it out. And then once it's uh, all the bolts are out, basically it's just going to slide right back, literally directly behind the engine. You just pick it up, set it aside for now. Now one of the things you can do on here is you can replace one of the, uh, the bearing shaft or the bearing piece here that the uh, throw up bearing slides on. I'm probably going to replace that to a steel retainer versus the aluminum normal that comes with it. This one's actually in pretty decent shape. Uh, it's not galled up. You know, usually the bearing sliding back and forth um, typically galls it up, kind of puts some teeth into it or, or I guess grinds it up, whatever you want to call it. Makes it bad. So you can buy a replacement for that and it's just the uh, four or five bolts on the front there. Unbolt it, put it right back and then uh, that's it. So now now my engine hoist is hooked up to the engine. I can lift from there. They'll give me access to these uh, bell housing bolts. Same thing, I'm going to take all those off, take the bell housing off, set it aside. Now remember, you do have a starter connected to your bell housing. So you're going to have to take that off first if you haven't. I haven't, got to come off. And then uh, we can look at the clutch and pressure plate. Alright, so quickly let me show you kind of the inside of your bell housing. So once your bell housing comes off, you're going to have uh, the clutch fork itself. Now on the outside, if you've got to this point, you've already taken off the uh, clutch cable off your Mustang. And then inside you can see this is the bearing. Now this slides on that shaft on the transmission where I showed you that can gall. This one's nice and greasy, so <laughs> I don't think it's going to gall anytime soon. But you can always replace this, if you, especially if you're doing a clutch. Do it all at the same time. If you're replacing everything, start fresh with everything. This is your shifter, uh, I'm sorry, your uh, fork in here. And then this basically rotates on a ball on this. So it's held on kind of like a little a finger over a little ball on top there. And then this just goes back and forth. So this slides here based on the clutch uh, cable pulling on this. And you can see it's kind of rotating there. So that's kind of the inside of your, of your bell housing. Now let me show you the back side of the clutch here on the back of the engine. All right, so here's, here's your clutch itself. So this is your pressure plate. And it's got these fingers in here that kind of push back and forth, pushing the clutch. Uh, the clutch disc itself pushing on that and that's got friction material rubbing on the back of the flywheel here And so this ring gear here is what your starter engages with so when it starts It's got a gear in there and it engages with these teeth Spins your engine that's how you start and so your clutch pressure plate is actually held on you can see There's bolts around this so I need to take those off then this literally just comes off and then you can see kind of the the mating surfaces there of where the clutch pressure plate pushes on the disc and then the disc pushes on the uh, flywheel. So let's take these bolts out, take this all apart and we'll see what we have. Alright, so now you're seeing the back of the engine. So this is your uh, flywheel that your clutch disc rubs against. So you can kind of see mine, it's really, really shiny, very glazed and you can kind of see it's got hot spots on it. You see these dark spots all over the place. This is bad. So this means this thing's well used very abused. It did work fine when I was driving it, the 30 miles I got out of it. But I'll tell you, if I started pushing on this thing hard, doing some racing or anything else, this thing is probably gonna uh, either warp or just flat start slipping. So when you look at the clutch disc here that's going together, you can kind of see the same thing. Here's the pucks. This actually rubs, is what rubs against here. And you can see these also are going to be uh, your friction material. These are what rubs. And you can see on this one itself, the friction material is actually gone. It's missing. So you can kind of see that there. You can see all the dark and then you've got a light color. That, that's gone. So that's obviously damaging this because that's where it's rubbing. And then these, these are very, um, <laughs> there's, there's really not much material there. If I flip it over, um, this is probably, this is uh, going in here. So this rubs. This piece here, I'm sorry, rubs against the flywheel. And you can look at it, it's pretty chewed up. Um, it's got some hot spots on it, you can kind of see there. And then if you show you the, the back side of the pressure plate, so this here, um, you can see a similar thing. So it's got hot spots all the way around it, and obviously that one uh, puck that was missing is just basically doing metal on this, grinding away. Thankfully the rivets weren't taller than the clutch pucks itself. But you can kind of see there all the hot spots and everything else. So these, these have been well used, well worn. Um, 
It looks like it's been replaced, so it's uh, got a center force clutch ID on it. So obviously somebody's replaced this with a center force clutch at some point. Uh, I'm going to re probably replace it back. I actually like this clutch uh, when I did it, so uh, I'll probably go back with the center force clutch and uh, use that again. And then all this stuff is now time to be replaced, and it's time to do some shopping. Okay, so with that, taking all the pieces apart, you obviously see that, uh, well, you know this got to have a new fluid in it, bearing uh, replacement there, bearing here, or shaft there, then obviously the clutch has been replaced because it's got a center force in it, and everything's got heat spots on it and chewed up. So, at that point, uh, time to do some shopping and get all this stuff replaced. So I'm going to put this engine up on the engine stand itself and uh, get it up off of the floor so I can kind of make some space. But everything I've used is basic hand tools. It's either a socket and ratchet or a, a uh, ratcheting wrench. Very easy to do. So that's how you take it all apart. It's very easy when it's obviously out of the car. When it's in the car, less easy, but same procedure. And you can use impacts or anything else. Here I didn't have to. So that's it for this time. You can follow me uh, again on Basin Motorsports. I will uh, obviously put up some pictures of this, the video itself. Remember, I'm doing weekly videos every week. Obviously, weekly means every week. Whatever. And I'm going to put it on on Tuesday. So, got a lot of things coming in 2017. Hopefully, I'll see you with some shows or anything else. And if you got anything questions on any of this Mustang stuff I'm doing, or just any car stuff in general, drop me a line. I'll see what I can do to help you. See you next time.